just like the 2005 08 market, we've talked about this before. No, it's different. But um, Scott, want you, would you, what's your sense? Is the, how does the, how is this not not like two? Oh, hey, Dylan, you talked about this earlier. Dylan, how is this not like the 05 08 market? The the big difference is lending standards and the lending environment. So the 05 to 08 market was driven by very loose, easy money that people were using to speculate and buy additional homes, additional rentals. And then it drove, and there was a lot of, there wasn't a lot of regulation in the market. So what was happening is, was realtors were sending unqualified buyers to lenders who were then qualifying them. And then appraisers were then appraising homes above value and putting people who probably couldn't afford it into a home that wasn't valued at what it should have been. And it led to the crisis that we got into. Those things have been fixed in financial regulations. There was a lot of collusion, kickbacks back and forth between lenders, appraisers, and realtors. You can't do that anymore. It's like they can't even buy you lunch anymore. It's like really touchy. So um that's the biggest the biggest difference is that people who are buying it's 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 true demand, right? The people who are buying right now, they have 20, 30, 40, 50 percent down or they have cash. So they're not coming in with a zero percent down loan and no provable income like you could back in the day. And I always use myself as an example in this is I bought my first house in 2004. I was in college in the GI Bill with no income and no job, no real income and no job. My wife who was not my wife at the time was teaching for six months. We had no savings, no income, uh, very little income, you know, no assets. And we still got a loan to buy a house. So we were like the poster child for the kind of people who are getting qualified to buy homes that shouldn't. We were responsible. We paid our mortgage. We didn't get foreclosed on, but I'm sure there were many people like us who did, who probably shouldn't have been buying at the time. And more recently, the last house I bought, I mean, it's, it's it was really hard and we are in a much better financial position now, but it was very stringent and they double checked everything and made sure that your finances were in place and that, you know, you weren't fudging the numbers on anything. So that's the biggest difference is the, is the, is the lending situation. So the big, the, to summarize, the big difference is that back then in 05, 08, they were giving out loans to people that should not have been borrowing that kind of money. And the, when those, when, and, and even sorry. today, right? I mean, I mean, I, you know, the three of us could probably speak to this. I have not closed a deal in the last three months where somebody didn't have a minimum of 20% down. I mean, it, 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 you don't even compete. If you come to the table with a, with a 0% down loan or a two or 3% down loan, I mean, they're, they're still out there. You can get those loans if you're in the right, you know, situation, uh, uh, financially, and they're not bad programs, but they're just so uncompetitive right now because when you go in with eight offers and two of them are cash, if you've got a low down payment loan, there's no way the seller's picking you. So um, even if the even if the market shifts 10% in the next 12 months, you know, if something crazy happens, something dramatic happens, these people, yes, they'll lose money on the value of their house, but they're not going to be underwater, right? They're still going to have 10% equity in the house because they put 20% down. If they're paying cash, you know, they're not, you know, you know, and the market goes down. Yeah, you might lose some of that value, but you're not going to be underwater. There isn't going to be this huge flood of foreclosures because people walked away from their homes because their home, they bought their home for 400 and now it was worth 300, right? So um, that's, that's a real big difference. Real big difference. Yeah. You know, and this is kind of an important topic because I think, um, a lot of people ask this question. A lot of people ask, you know, are we in a bubble? This is not the first time this has popped up. So I'm glad you went into detail. Heidi, is there anything you want to add to what Dylan said as far as the, the difference it feels? I mean, have you had any people who have not given, who have not had a 20 or 30% down or if not all cash deal? I mean, what would you add to what Dylan said about this question? of Are we going into another bubble, you know, a 2005 and 2008? Heidi, you might be muted. I think Dylan described it beautifully. I do think it's different. I mean, I was just thinking I have buyers that are putting 20% down and they're getting beat out with, by full cash offers. So it, it's definitely a different market um, for sure than 2005 to 2008. I had an yeah. experience recently where um, a buyer provided a proof of funds in Bitcoin and <laughs> The seller ended up canceling on them because they wanted cash funds and the buyer really didn't want to sell their Bitcoin. And they even created some incentive. I mean, in the offer, there was a $40,000 non-refundable deposit after 10 days if they could just leave their money in Bitcoin. <laughs> didn't come to agreement um, and they ended up not getting the condo. <laughs> Right. It's, it, this is not a seller's, this is not a buyer's market. This is a, so I'm going to hold on to my Bitcoin to see if it appreciates and blah, blah, that like, dude, 
you're making things too damn complicated. Um, Scott, well, anything one, you want to add? Oh, okay, no. One more, Go one more stat, important stat, you know, about the the housing market supply and demand is that in the lead up to you know the early 2000s to the lead up to the bubble popping, there was uh, record high numbers of four years leading up to 2008. There's record high numbers of new homes being built um, in in America across the country. If you look at national housing numbers, so. If you take the the fifty year average, right? Those those four years leading up to the bubble, there was record high um, numbers of new homes being built. In the last ten years, the number of new homes being built has been has been well below the national average. So that's further contributed to the supply crisis. Is that home builders just haven't been building at the rate they were before? So there was a huge supply of homes leading up to 08, where people again, right? We're just buying them like crazy because of all this free money. And now there is a real constraint because uh, population has continued to grow, right? I mean, millennials and and the next generations have gone into the, gotten into the home buying age. Baby boomers are li living longer. So there's been a huge increase in demand for homes, but we've been building them at a slower pace than we ever have in the last 50 years. And that's further constrained supply. So that's Man. a big, that's a big fundamental difference in the market. Also, Big fundamental difference here hey, real quick before we get to Scott's point. Uh, yeah. So Alex uh, commented that Bitcoin dropped 10, uh, 10 K. So I don't know how that all went. Uh, and, and Jessica, Jessica Morris, uh, uh, Islander Ohana member, best joke of the day. Yeah. Yeah. But did the Bitcoin guy have a stack of wood in his shed? <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't be offer. I mean, instead of my, my earnest deposit is a stack of wood in my shed. I know what it's worth. That's hilarious. Scott, is there anything that you want to add to what's been said already about the 05? Oh, wait, you've been involved in all kinds of financial transactions. What do you think? Uh, how do you respond to that? Yeah, everybody was mo making moves and getting money and moving around in that 2005 to 2008 market to where there are just a ton of transactions. There were way more homes that you knew a new home was going to come on the market, a new opportunity was going to come on the market the next day during that time. And this is the exact opposite. You have to show there's a there's a ton of cash out there and, and capital that people have access to. The, the lending restrictions are much tighter, but nobody's moving. So, you know, I, I've got a client we've written. We, we wrote a $200,000 over asking offer the other day and, and lost it. And he's like, man, I don't get it, you know, and we're going to have to wait another month for the that same type of home that he wants to come up where in 2005 to 2008 it's totally different um yeah and the home building deficit is they anticipate is going to last for for over a, for about a decade for us to get caught up wow. in that capacity wow so I, I, mean, I don't i don't see us not having problems here for a while that's a that's a strange statement i don't see us not having problems for a while that okay yeah so that means we are we, you do see us having problems for a while so yeah it, it's really actually this is maybe for another show because we can kind of go down a fun rabbit hole here because there's going to be you know there's a we're not going to have an 0508 bubble and we're not going to have a bubble in the way we're thinking about a bubble but i know this bubbles are always preceded by people saying oh no this is not like the last time i know that I know that. So, well, so something well, we got to have more than one year of 20% price appreciation. One year is not going to do it. You got to have more. And there's two, I'm working with too many people right now that are just sitting on a ton of cash. And, and here's the discussion I had with somebody the other day, uh, a client of mine, and we actually ended up getting an escrow, man, I can't believe these prices. 10 years ago, I bought a home in Kailua. It was so affordable at that time. And I said, Whoa, whoa. how are you comparing this to 10 years ago? Listen, I know, I know prices are going a little crazy and you're not comfortable with it, but you're bringing in a significant amount of cash. Are you comfortable with that mortgage payment? Yes. And that we were going to set that mortgage payment to where if they got sick, went in the hospital, lost their job, whatever, can you rent it out and cover it? Yes. Okay. What, what do you worry about? Set it and forget it at that point because you're planning routes and you're going to be here for the long run. Even if there is a dip at some point, which I don't see here in the short run, you're you're going to make it up in the long run in the back end and you need a house housing is one of the three basics of life food water and shelter do you want to dump four grand a month and pay in somebody else's mortgage or do you want to get in and have that kind of forced savings account yeah and funny we just had that discussion just yesterday with some family uh, that were lamenting the same kind of things like man you know housing is so expensive right now you know only five years ago this was so much cheaper like, yeah but but you can't you can't we don't live five years ago. We're living today and we have to look forward and you know, it, it is what it is. All right. Hey, let's, let's kind of.